All right, we're trying to finish up section 7.2. We're talking about symmetry and polar coordinates. There's three types of symmetry with respect to polar coordinates. The first one is symmetry with respect to uh, the polar axis. Polar axis. Symmetry with respect to the polar axis. So the polar axis, there's the pole, and you can think about the polar axis if you were thinking in terms of the rectangular coordinate system. The polar axis would be the positive x-axis, the positive x-axis. So symmetry with respect to the pole means if I have some point defined right here as r and theta, okay, right? There's r, there's theta. If I have some point defined R and theta, all right, then symmetry with respect to the pole means that the point R um, negative theta. You can get, basically, if you have this point R theta, then you can reflect across the polar axis and you'll get the point R negative theta, okay? R negative theta where negative theta is just the angle from here to here, okay? So again, if a function is symmetric to the polar axis, then if you have this point and you replace theta with negative theta, you'll get this point, and if you get the same function. So the test, this is gonna be the test. How do we figure out if a function is symmetric with respect to the polar axis? Well, you replace R and theta with our negative theta. That's what we're going to do to test and see if a function is symmetric to the polar axis. We will replace our theta with our negative theta. And the, the goal is if we get the exact same equation we started with, then my function is symmetric to the polar axis. The second type of symmetry is symmetry with respect Two. Second one they do is the line theta equals power two. The line theta equals power two. That's the second type of symmetry. Symmetry with respect to the line theta equals power two. So again, there's the polar axis, all right? Theta equals power two. Well, there's the angle power two. So what we're saying is, what we're saying is, if we've got a point r comma theta like this, all right, that's r. Well, if a polar graph, if a uh, polar equation is symmetric with respect to the line theta equals power two, then if you have this point, then you automatically have this point. Okay, you can reflect this point across the line theta equals power two, and you'll get this point right here. This point right there, they say r theta is the same as r pi minus theta, okay? So again, what's my test? How do I figure out if a function is symmetric with respect to the line theta equals power over uh, two? We will replace r theta with r pi minus theta, okay? And again, if I get the exact same function that I started out with, then my function is symmetric with respect to the line theta equals power two. And if I wanna graph that thing, I really only have to graph one half of it and I can use the symmetric properties to get the other half of the function. And the third type of symmetry, the third type of symmetry they talk about is symmetry with respect to the pole. Symmetry with respect to the pole. Okay. So there's my polar axis. There's the pole. So what I'm saying is if I've got some point R comma theta, okay, symmetry with respect to the pole means I'll have this point. Um, call it 
negative r theta. Okay? So if a function is symmetric with respect to the pole, if r theta is on that graph of that function, then negative r theta would be on that graph. And the test, the test, how do we apply or how do we figure out if a function is symmetric with respect to the pole, we will replace r theta with negative r theta. And again, if we get the exact same function back that we had when we began, then our function is symmetric with respect to the pole. So those are the three types of symmetry for these polar equations, these are the three types of symmetry. So with that in mind, with that in mind, let's see if we can apply these symmetry tests, okay? Example two. They ask us to graph. They give us a function. R equals two minus two cosine theta. R equals two minus two cosine theta. Okay. And they say, first test for symmetry. First test for symmetry. So, first symmetry I'm going to test for is symmetry with respect to the polar axis. Polar axis symmetry. So let's recall what the test was. For polar axis symmetry, okay, we'll replace r theta with r negative theta. r theta with r negative theta. So in that equation, Everywhere I had an R, I leave it R. But where I used to have a theta, I put negative theta. So R equals 2 minus 2 cosine negative theta. Okay? Where I had theta, I put negative theta. But let's see what happens. Cosine of negative theta on your identity sheet, the cosine of negative theta is the same thing as cosine of theta, or the positive negative theta. So when I take cosine of negative theta, that's equivalent to cosine theta. So r is equal to 2 minus 2 cosine theta. That's exactly what I started out with. So since I when I replace theta with negative theta, I get the exact same equation back that I started with. That means we have polar axis symmetry. So we have polar axis symmetry. That means we have polar axis symmetry. Okay, B. B is theta equals pi over two symmetry. I want to see if my function is symmetric with respect to the line theta equals pi over two, okay? Well, for theta equals pi over two, they say replace r theta with r pi minus theta. So the test is replace r theta with r pi minus theta, okay? And when I do that, I take my original equation, the r is pi, 2 minus 2 cosine. So where I used to have theta, I replaced that with pi minus theta. Okay? Now, to evaluate that function, I'm going to need some of my identities, and specifically cosine of u minus v. I'm going to need that difference formula for cosine that we did back in chapter 5, maybe. So the cosine of u minus v is cosine cosine plus sine sine. 2 minus 2 cosine pi cosine theta plus sine pi sine theta. Okay? All I'm doing is applying that identity, the difference formula for cosine. On your identity sheet, the cosine of u minus v is cosine cosine plus. I'll write it right here. Cosine u minus v, cosine u, cosine v minus sine u, sine v. That's an identity, and it's on your identity sheet. So hopefully that makes sense, okay? So that's what I applied right here. I had cosine of u minus v, cosine u, cosine v plus sine u, sine v. Now, we know a lot about the unit circle. The cosine of pi is gonna be 
Look at pi. The cosine of pi is going to be negative 1. The sine of pi is going to be 0, so this term is going to go away. Okay? But the cosine of pi is negative 1. So I get that r equals 2 minus. The 2 is still there. And cosine of pi was negative 1, so I'll have negative 1 times cosine of theta. I'll just put that here. And again, that stuff went away. It was 0. Sine of pi is 0, so all of that goes away. Well, let's simplify this. 2, negative 2 times negative 1 makes plus 2 cosine of theta. So r is 2 plus 2 cosine theta. Well, my original function was r equals 2 minus 2 cosine theta. So since I didn't get the exact same function, that means that I do not have symmetry with theta equals pi over 2. So no, theta equals pi over 2 is symmetry. I don't have any symmetry with respect to the line theta equals pi over 2. And the last symmetry we're going to test is pole symmetry. Symmetry to the pole. Okay? And for symmetry with respect to the pole, they say replace r theta with negative r theta. Replace r theta with negative r theta. So r equals 2 minus 2 cosine where I used to, well, replace r with negative r, sorry. Where I used to have r, I put a negative r, right? Replace r theta with negative r theta. That's the only thing that changes. And to get rid of this negative, I can multiply everything by a negative 1. So multiply this by a negative 1, I get positive r. Multiply this one by a negative 1, I get negative 2. Multiply this one by a negative 1, I get positive 2. And again, since I didn't get the exact same equation back, I do not have symmetry with respect to the pole. So no. Symmetry to the pole. I won't have any symmetry with respect to the pole. So these are my three symmetry tests and how I perform each one of them. Okay? These are my three symmetry tests and how I perform each one of them. So the only symmetry I had was this polar axis symmetry. Okay? The only symmetry I had was this polar axis symmetry. So this is going to help me because what polar axis symmetry means, okay? So again, if I have a point here, that means that I can reflect across here and I'll have the graph here. So really, I'm going to get the graph over here in this first quadrant, right? And then I'll get this for free because once I figure out what the graph looks like right here, I can reflect across that line, the polar axis, and I'll automatically know what the graph looks like here. So I won't have to find any points down here in the fourth, what used to be the fourth quadrant when we were in uh, polar or rectangular coordinates. So my polar axis symmetry, that's my polar axis. Once I get this graph, I'll reflect that across the polar axis. That'll give me this graph. And I will have to get some points over here, though, to figure out the graph of the function. So I'm definitely going to have to plot some points. Okay? So let's go ahead and plot some points. We're going to plot points from 0 to essentially 3 pi over 2. So, r theta. So I'm going to go theta equals 0. And I'll do the same ones they do. Pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. All the ones, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. Um, oh, what's the next one? Um, 2 pi over 3. Um, 3 pi over 4, then I'm going to do 5 pi over 6, then I'm going to do pi, then I'm going to do um, 7 pi over 6, I'm going to do um, 5 pi over 4, then I'm going to do um, 5 pi over 3, 3 pi over 2. Those are the points I'm going to do. Okay. And I know I'll need at least that. Okay, I'll need at least that. Um, so let's see. R equals 2 minus 2 cosine theta. That's my equation. So all I'm going to do is plug in those points. Move that down just a little bit. 
So when I plug in a zero, two minus two cosine of zero, well again, these are radians, make sure you calculate these in radians. Cosine of zero is one. So that's zero. Then plug in power of six. R equals two minus two cosine power of six. Two minus two. Cosine of power of six. At power of six, the x coordinate is square root of three over two. Okay? Square root of three over two. Okay? And do this, if you want, just do that in your calculator, get a decimal equivalent. At pi over 6, they say you'll get 0 0.27. I'm going to call it 0 0.3. 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 here. Then do pi over 4. R equals 2 minus 2 cosine. Pi over 4. 2 minus 2 times. Cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Okay? So that'll be 2 minus the square root of 2. That'll be about 0.6. I'm going to call it 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So that's all we're doing here. So I'm not going to belabor it. I'm going to get 0 0.59, 0 0.6 there. I'm going to get a 1 at power of 3. At power of 2, we're going to get um, 2. At 2 power of 3, we're going to get 3. At... 3 power over 4, we're going to get 3.4. And 5 power over 6, we're going to get 3.7. Okay? And at pi, we're going to get 4. Okay? And we'll stop there. You can keep doing, keep going and keep getting the rest of them. Okay? Nothing hard about any of that. And so when I grab this thing, So plot your point. Zero, zero is right here. Pi over six. So we got so at power of six, we've got point three. Zero, zero. Power of 6.3. Um, power of 3, we got 1. On power of 4, we got 0. 0.6. Power of 3, we got 1. And then at power of 2, we got 2. So it's doing this. And again, I'm doing it by hand, so um, take that with a grain of salt. Then at 2 power of 3, we got 3. 2 power of 3, 1, 2, 3. At 3 power over 4, we got um, 1, 2, 3.4. At 5 power over 6, that's this vector, we've got 3.7. 1, 2, 3.7. And at pi, we've got 4. So, and if you do the rest of the points, it's going to do this. And that should be nice and smooth. Okay, that's the graph of that thing. All right. Well, we see that these things look a little strange. This is not a circle. It comes in and it goes in, then it comes back out. So this, and again, we had that symmetry, so we don't have to draw this little half. We can use symmetry, okay, to get that. So this is the graph of that function. So that's how we use symmetry. That's how we can graph these functions. Um. They show us on page 704. I'm going to let you do the rest of these graphs because it's pretty much the same. Check your symmetry, plot some points, graph your equation. That's how we're going to do it. Now, there are some common, common polar equations in their graphs.
That's going to be on page 704, page 705. So I'm going to make sure, and I'll pull up the book and show you a short video on this online so we can kind of go through these things. And that's where um, I'll finish up this section is going through um, these common polar equations and graphs. So this ends what I'm going to do on the board. I'm going to do a short video on uh, Blackboard where I can actually pull up the book and show you these graphs of these polar equations because sometimes they have patterns, okay? For example, circles in polar. That's the key thing here. We know what a circle like looks like in rectangular, but a circle in polar could be R equals A, where A is just any real number, R equals 2, that's a circle. R equals 5 is a circle. A circle could also be R equals A cosine theta. R equals A cosine theta. Or a circle could be R equals A sine theta. Okay? Or R equals A theta. These are all circles. Oh, no, 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 no. That one is not. I'm sorry. Three ways to write a circle in polar. Okay? So we're going to need to kind of be familiar with these uh, polar equations and how to write these graphs in polar, okay? And that's what we're going to look at in that short video that I'm going to post where I can actually show you those equations in the book so that we can, we'll be able to recognize when these polar equations are these certain types of graphs, okay? So that's what we're going to do next. That concludes this video.